All right, guys, sorry about that. Had I messed up on my camera. So I hope you guys understand that between the obligations. Now, some people will try to do this. I'm going to give you a verse. Um, actually, before I go there, I'm going to go to Revelation 14, verse 11. So we're going to go there. And I want to give you an example of just a, a consequence, right? Just a regular consequence. Revelation 14, verse 11. Now, this should be common sense, but, you know, just, just in case, give an example. Revelation 14, verse 11. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Oh, let me let me go up. Uh, Romans, sorry, Revelation 14, verse 10 through 11. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night, who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So let's say, uh, I'm just going to have to say it. Some smart ass was to say, well, Brandon, you talked about obligations and weak and strong obligation. And you know what, Brandon? I think Romans 14 verse 11 I don't think I'm going to, I don't, I think I don't care about that. I don't care about that warning that God just gave right there, the people that take the mark of the beast. I, I don't care. Well, that person is just completely ignoring scripture, right? We just read it. What's going to happen if you take that mark of the beast? That is an example of a consequence. What would happen to a person that takes the mark of the beast? God makes it very clear and evident in Revelation 14 verse 11. So I'm trying to hope, hope you see the, the difference between like an obligation with no consequence. I've already given you uh, what Romans 6 verse 6, that was a weak obligation, no consequence whatsoever. We should not serve sin. This verse, however, Romans 14, 11, this is, just, this is a consequence of you taking the mark of the beast. Clear and evident. So you, if you read the scripture today and you were to get left behind, hope you don't, but if you were, you should know not to take the mark of the beast of Romans 14, Revelation 14, 11. But believe it or not, there's probably going to be people, because they don't read scripture, because they were deceived by their pastor, they will take the mark of the beast. And they will say, I, I didn't even know. I didn't know. But that's because you never read the scripture. But let's go to another one. So I want to give you guys an example. I'm going to put Romans 6, verse 6 back up on the board, where some people... They, let me put up here. I'm going to put another verse up here. We're going to go to Romans 6, verse 23. Trying to finish my thought, what I was about to say. But first, I want to find this verse. No, that's it or not. <clears throat> Actually, I'm sorry, guys. It's Romans one, Romans one, verse thirty-two. So there are people that when they read the scripture, because they don't know how to Second Timothy two, verse fifteen, rightly divide word of truth. Romans 1 verse 32. They don't really understand what is going on.
and they had most likely been deceived by someone. So I'm going to read this. Who knowing the judgment of God, that they shall, they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now, a person that loves to use this verse, actually, pretty much, uh, let me see. This, this is the reprobate, reprobate doctrine, what I'm reading. Pastor Anderson, uh, that's what we call him, Sanderson. I think, no, it's Anderson. And uh, heretic, huge heretic, believes homosexuals can't be saved. He gets his, he, he twists the words, but these verses talk about the reprobate doctrine. And I know I have a viewer on my channel that has been wanting to hear more about that, and that's what I'm going to talk about right now. So, let me first go to Romans 18. So this is Romans 1, verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath show, showed it unto them. From the invisible things of him, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their man imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. I want to just explain something right here. That's all of us in verse 21. If you think that's not you, I don't, I'm sorry. You, verse 21, let's read this again. This is you and me. This is all humanity. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but, but became vain in their imagination. You are really deceived if you think that you have glorified God all your life. Like you, you, you've non-ceasingly been glorifying God. You are deceived if you, if you think in your mind, no, I, I always glorify God. I knew God and I constantly glorify God. No, you've known God and you've, let's read that again. You knew God, and you glorified him not as God, the same as I did. We all have. Neither were thankful, became vain in their imagination, their foolish heart was darkened. That's all of us. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man. Pastor Anderson reads this as if he has not done these things. He is deceiving you. Pastor Anderson has done the exact things I'm reading to you right now. I have done the exact same things I'm reading to you right now. No, I am not a homosexual. I have not done homosexual actions, but I have fornicated and done other sins. Homos Pastor Anderson has a specific made up man doctrine where he believes, oh, you can do everything, every other sin as long as you're not gay. As long as you didn't do the homosexual sin, you're not a reprobate. No, I'm telling you, if you've done what I just read to you, you are a reprobate. I was a reprobate. Now, you are no longer a reprobate, ma'am or sir, who I'm speaking to, if you have believed the gospel. If you have believed the gospel, you have been accepted into the beloved. If you have not believed the gospel, yes, you are a reprobate. You are rejected and you are on your own your way to hell. So the point is, at one time, all of us were reprobates. That's the answer. We all were reprobates at one time. No one comes out of their mom's womb saved. Sanderson preaches this though. Oh, oh, you have to keep yourself in that saved mode uh, until you do something gay. Uh, now, now you're reprobated. I don't even know what he's talking about. We all were reprobate at one point in time. Let's keep reading. Verse 23, and change the glory of the un uncorruptible, God, uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie. People are doing that today. <laughs> There's people preaching 
lies. But, oh, I'm not a reprobate, but you're preaching lies. <laughs> Let me just keep reading. And worship and serve this creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, let me first say, if you're saved and you have been deceived and you are preaching lies now, you're not a reprobate. Reprobate is talking about a person that has not, that's not saved. If you lie that and still lie after you're saved, you do not become a reprobate. If you do, you're saved, right? And you do something gay, you do not become a reprobate. You are either a reprobate or you are saved. That's what I'm saying. You can be a saved person, lie, be gay, fornicate. You are not a reprobate. You are saved. You have been cut off from your flesh. Your, your flesh sins. Your spirit does not sin. No matter how, people just don't believe it. Oh, I saw that guy watch that porn or go to that strip club. There's no way. Well, you just, you don't believe the God. You don't believe the Bible. You don't believe the gospel. You don't believe the power of God. When God said he saved you, he saved you. And all of you. Now, he did not change your flesh. He changed your spirit and your soul. He did not change your flesh. Therefore, your flesh still sins. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And you're going to continue to sin. So I don't want to hear this. But if you do this, you're a reprobate. Leave the channel. No, if you're saved, you're not a reprobate. But if you not, if you have not believed the gospel, you, sir or ma'am, are a reprobate. So let me keep reading. Uh, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their in their lust one toward another. Man with man work. It's amazing how he just skips. Anderson just skips all these things and goes to this one verse. <laughs> it's amazing to me. But um, for even their women change the natural use unto that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn their lust one to another, man with man working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error, which was me. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Reprobate means rejected. It doesn't mean rejected forever. It means rejected. Uh, to do those things which are not, not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, bolsters, inventors of evil things, dis disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, I've done all those things, who knowing the judgment of God that which commits such things are worthy of death. Now, let me ask you this. What are the payments for sin? Answer, the wages of sin is death. You can go to verses, we're going to be going there. We're going to be going to Romans 6 verse 23 and Romans 3 verse 23. The wages of sin is death. Now there are individuals today that think that is still applying today because they do not accept the sacrifice Christ made at the cross. Therefore, in their mind, they think if you sin today, you will die. Now let me say this, then we're all dead. It's over. There's no hope. That's it. Let me turn off the video. No. There was a sacrifice made at the cross. A sacrifice for our sins. Christ took a death for our sins. He took that sacrifice. It's done, people. But people, you want to sit here and let somebody deceive you into thinking that you're still going to pay for sins. No, you're not. The sacrifice has been made. It's over. Christ forgave your sins through his blood at the cross. Took a death for your sins. Wages of sin is death. Took a death for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. It's over. But there's people that they, they won't let it go. So that's why I want you to understand. We're going to go to Romans verse 23. Um, let me finish reading this first. Who knowing the judgment of God that which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And yes, I have had pleasure in the sin that I commit. Still do. Uh, so... Oh my gosh, you're bad. No, that's my flesh. That's it. It's, it's not going to change till God changes, until he gives me a new body. So while I'm trying to get you people to understand, there are people out there that will try to say, well, if you commit those sins, Brandon, 
you're done, you're reprobate or, or whatever. No, I just proved to you, if you believe the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15 verses one through four, you're saved. Uh, we're gonna go to another one that explains you're sealed with the Holy Spirit as long as you believe the gospel. And then Romans six verse six just says, we should not serve sin. So how does that make sense that, that Paul tells us in Romans one verse 32, he says, who knowing the judgment of God that commits such things. So he's talking about the judgment of God pertaining to those sins, right? But then at the same time, he just said, should not serve sin. Now, how does this make any sense? Is Paul saying to do these things at the same time? No, he's not. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. This is presently going on right now. We should not serve sin. Romans 1 verse 32, knowing the judgment of of those that do those things, who knowing the judgment of God, what is the judgment of God for sin? People, the wages of sin is death. Let's go to another verse. Let me see how much time I got. Okay, good. Romans 3, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23. Well, actually, this, this is not it, but I'm going to use this for a second. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all sinned. We've all sinned. The wages of sin is death. We've all sinned. If, if there was no sacrifice, if that had not have taken place on the cross, then we have no hope and it's over. And I'm making this video for no reason. But thank God, Jesus, he's God. He did do a sacrifice for your sins. The wages of sin is no longer death. You're not going to die for your sins. If you say the wages of sin today is death, you do not accept the sacrifice God made for your sins. He took the wages of your sin. He did in the past. When you sin today, you're committing forgiven sins. Those sins have already been paid for. They've already been, for, they've already been forgiven. They've been already been paid for. It's over. Don't say it in your mind as if it's something I have to pay for. I got to pay for this sin today. No, you don't. Christ has already made that sacrifice for your sins. He's already done that. You got to get it through your mind and you got to believe what God has said. It's all in the mind. You got to change how you think. Just believe what the scripture says, people. That's all you got to do. This is not the verse I wanted, but let's go to Romans 6. Let's turn back. Go to Romans 6. Yeah, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Apologize, guys. That's my Xbox making this sound. Let me turn this off. I don't know why it's making this sound. So, we're going to go to Ezekiel. That's the last verse we'll be going to. And to wrap up this part two. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20. We're going back in the past again. 18, verse 20. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So, this is what I'm saying. That principle is not transdispensational. Some people will try to tell you that. It's not transdispensational. That principle, the soul that sinned, it shall die, is true. But that was before a sacrifice for your sins was made. That is what God was saying before. Before there was a sacrifice on the cross, Yes, the soul that sinned, it shall die. Now today, why does a person die today? Things have changed. Today, in the dispensation of grace, you don't believe the gospel. The soul that does not believe the gospel, one, one minute, you're already dead. You're already dead. But the soul that does not believe the gospel, you will not get eternal life. You will die. You will go to that second death. None of this is for your sins. So I hope you understand that. 
In the past, the soul is sinned, it shall die. The wages of sin is death. Christ already took care of that at the cross. What about today? I'm living after the cross. What happens if I sin today? Nothing. You should not serve sin. But you won't be judged for your sins. You have to understand that. So don't believe this crap when someone tells you you'll lose your salvation. Those are people, and I'm going to do a part three to this. Those are people that are talking about something in Hebrews, more than likely. They're talking about a verse where people could lose their sin. It's in Hebrews. I don't know the exact chapter and verse. I've already done a video on it, but I'll do another one on it. But today, you should not serve sin. That's all you should be doing. A weak obligation. If you choose to say, I disregard that and I will serve sin. Okay. You shouldn't do it, but okay. You'll reap what you sow, but okay. God's not going to do nothing to you. He's not going to punish you. But some people just can't get it in their head, man, because they got to add the scripture. They, just, they can't believe it. You know, I heard something too good to be true. They think it's too good to be true. They don't believe that. They said, there's got to be a catch. I, God's going to do something to me. No, he's not going to do anything to you. You should not serve sin. That's it. You have liberty. You should not serve sin. You choose. Are you going to serve sin? Or are you going to serve God? You got to make that choice. But the point is, I just wanted to stress, the wages of sin is death. So the sin that it should die. It's already taken place. Christ took that death for all your sins already in the past. That's gone. It's over. Stop living in the past. You're now. You're in 2021. You're after the cross. Our, the sacrifice has been made, people. It's over. Let it go. Let it go and move on. Leave sin in the past where it is. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 19, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. It means exactly what it says. The world. Some people are going to try and mess with your mind and say, that's the body of Christ. Those are, those are sick individuals, corrupt, diseased minds, lying to you, trying to pervert scripture, change it, tweak it to the way they want to say lies. No, God's not charging sin today. He's not charging trespasses. Let it accept what the scripture says and stop fighting it. Now, some of you, probably 95% of what, I don't want to say that. There's a small amount of people that are going to believe what I'm saying. But the believers, the real, the ones that are actually saved in this world are a remnant. And it's been a remnant all throughout the entire Bible. Most of you are not going to be saved because you won't believe. Just always remember, it was your choice to not believe what God said. I don't like that Brandon. I don't, I don't like that guy. You know, I, I just don't like him. I don't like him because he's black. I, I don't, I don't want to hear the scripture from a black man, but I'm still telling you the truth. I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to believe. I have people in my family like that too. Black people in my family. Let's say there's a white guy preaching scripture uh, and it's rightly by it. It's the truth. They still won't listen to him because they'll be like, he's white. I'm not going to listen to him. Point is, why am I even saying that? I'm trying to explain to you Someone telling you the truth in the scripture. Listen to the scripture. It's not about me. Just go check the verses I put up here. That's all you got to do. It's not that hard. And I know it's going to blow your mind. I know it's going to be like, oh, really? That's what it is? Look it out. Look it up. Check it for yourself. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. Um, I'm mayor. I think I'm going to be done for a while. I might be taking another, like a week break. Uh, but, you know, hope you guys learned something today. And understand that there's things in the scripture that they're obligations, but they're not obligations. There's no consequences. There's no negative consequences if you don't do that obligation. I've just proven that to you. But there are parts in the Bible there where there are consequences for not listening to God. So there's parts in the Bible where it's like, again, you should not serve sin, no consequence. Revelations 14, the one I gave you before. You take the mark of the beast, there's a, there's, there's a consequence. That consequence is the smoke of it. Now, nobody in this dispensation can take it. I'm talking about the people in the future. Those people in the future, they don't believe the Bible. They take that mark of the beast. The smoke of their torment shall ascend up forever and ever. So, all right, no, guys. Have a great day.